Wow, that was close to my face. <laughs> Hi, I'm Vincent and I'm a, one second. That's better. I'm Vincent and I'm a product design engineer. This is a $300 top of the line multi cooker marketed as one of the best in the world. And this is an Instant Pot with all your standard multi cooking features. I'm gonna be testing these out, breaking down why they're designed the way they are, not necessarily to say one is better than the other, but to examine variation in multi cooker technology. This is tried and tested multi cookers. So I've got two cuts of pork shoulder here, which I'll be using to make one of my favorite recipes, pernil. For this test, we'll be using two functions, sauteing and pressure cooking. Ideally, when we saute, what we're looking for here is that the heat plate gets hot enough to properly brown the meat. So we hit the saute function and put the pork shoulder in. Can you hear that? Sounds like sizzling. The pork shoulder in the breville is definitely browning faster. So what I'm doing now is rotating it so that I'm getting browning on all sides of the pork shoulder. So we got some nice even browning. Step one, sauteing is done. Let's go ahead and start pressure cooking. Pour the rest of this marinade, close the Instapot. This is gonna be a manual pressure cook, 70 minutes set to high pressure. For the Rebel, I'm gonna go and select custom. It's set to 12 PSI of pressure, which is the high mode on the Rebel. Currently it is preheating. So there are three major parts of pressure cooking. Build up, pressure cooking, and release. As the heat plate turns on, it begins to heat up the air locked inside the sealed vessel. This hot air expands, and with nowhere to go, the internal pressure begins to build up inside the chamber. Any liquid in the system also expands, and as it reaches high temperature, it builds steam pressure. In order to do this in a safe way, multi-cookers include two important components. The first is a pressure release valve. This relieves and regulates the pressure as it builds up. It also controls the natural or quick release of the pressure by letting steam out at the end of the cooking process. The second component is a pressure sensor. This tells the cooker when a pressure limit is reached so that the pressure buildup can safely stop. Each of these machines can reach 12 PSI. That's 12 pounds per square inch. Not to worry, that's still less than the amount of pressure in your typical can of soda. The fact is that in a sealed pressure cooker, the boiling point of water goes up as pressure increases. This higher temperature shortens cooking time, and since evaporation is limited, moisture stays within the chamber and within the food being cooked, leading to a more flavorful result. And you'll notice both of these tell you different information. The Instapot tells you very little information. It basically just tells you that it's on. You don't see the time yet, and the reason for that is that it's actually not to pressure yet, so the countdown hasn't started. But how is one to know that? So you can see that the steam is actually releasing as it's building pressure. That should stop, wow, that was cool, when it hits pressure, which it just did. What is the chance of the timing being exactly when I said that? That's crazy. <laughs> okay, so now the preheating stage is over, and instead of showing on, which is still on, now shows the time. So it's an hour and 10 minutes until we're done. As I mentioned before, that's gonna happen though, by the way. <laughs> so the Breville is a little bit different. As the Breville builds up pressure, it kind of releases and pulses in order to safely get up to pressure. So it's been about 70 minutes of pressure cooking, plus an additional 20 minutes of letting both machines naturally release. Some recipes call for a natural release, which basically you just wait until the pressure relieves itself through the valve. Some recipes call for a manual release as soon as pressure cooking is done. So now it's ready to go. What I'm really looking for here is just a really tender piece of meat. Let's see how they do. They both look really good. They both definitely fell apart. They both smell really good and they both have a good consistency. Let's give it a taste. First, I'm gonna start with the Instant Pot. Well, it's pretty good. I think that I would trick my mom here. I think she would think that this was made the traditional way. Okay, let's try the Breville. Also really good. It's hard to tell the difference. So as far as the meat consistency, it's a pretty close match to my mom's Renew, but one thing that you're not getting is the crispy skin. And that's a pretty big deal. Some people would consider it the best part. But in general, if you're making a dish that's like a pulled pork, especially like a barbecue pulled pork, this is a great option. With prep and cooking time, it only took about two hours to get a result. Ask my mom how she makes it, and it literally takes an entire Sunday. But the fact that you can get this type of outcome on these devices is pretty amazing. So whether you spend $100 or $300, you're basically getting the same result here. I think the big difference is going to be how they communicate what they're doing to me as a user. So next up, we're making beans, specifically pinto beans. Oh my gosh, <laughs> very, very dry. So both of these machines have a lot of presets on them and beans is one of them. Beans was interesting to me because I know that beans take a really long time to make. So I got my pinto beans here and a bunch of aromatics and ingredients that will give it some flavor as well. So what we're looking for is a nice rehydrated cooked bean, not too hard, not too soft. Let's get started. Put the beans in. So I got some onions, garlic, jalapeno, and some chili powder. Add the water and some salt. All right, so our beans are locked and loaded. Let's pressure cook them. So for the Instant Pot, the preset sets it to 30 minutes at high pressure. For the Breville, it's preheating for 20 minutes at 12 PSI. It's going to be cooking at high pressure, but for 10 minutes less than the Instant Pot. Now it tells us it's preheating. 
And this one is also preheating, even though it says on. Very confusing. This will be a great test because we're gonna be able to test the preset functions on both of these machines. I can see that presets are a problem because both of these machines have completely different preset settings for the same thing that I'm putting into the machine. It also doesn't know the quantity of beans I'm putting in and the amount of water that I'm putting in, whether those beans have been soaked or not. There are so many variables at play here. And the idea that there's one button that captures all of that makes me very skeptical. So let's talk about what's happening inside right now. The high pressure environment literally pushes moisture into the bean to allow for even and efficient cooking. One minor difference between these two is the wattage. A watt is a unit of power. The Breville is at 1100 watts while the Instant Pot is 1000 watts. What's surprising to me from all that is that the Instant Pot actually does get uh, warmer quicker and actually gets to pressure faster than the Breville, despite the lower wattage. So it looks like the Instant Pot um, has gone and beeped, which means that the pressure cooking has started. The Breville took a bit longer to reach pressure, but somehow they've caught up to each other. They both have about 20 minutes left. I know I'm a product design engineer, but I'm not really sure what's going on here. So the pressure cooking phase is done. Now we're going to let them release steam. All right, let's see how our beans did. I don't know, these don't look very ready. I'm gonna give it a shot though. I wouldn't call them raw, but they're definitely not cooked. Let's see how the Breville did. These look even more raw. So the presets didn't really work for us. So what we're gonna do is put them back in and add 30 minutes at manual high pressure. All right, see you guys in 30 minutes, plus preheating time and steam release. Can we do one of those time swipe things? Okay, it's been about 30 minutes. Let's see what we got now. Looks pretty good. So the Instant Pot gave you a good result after the additional time, not super mushy, just like a nice firm bean cooked all the way through. Let's try the Breville. Mm, pretty much exactly the same, really good result. So the same thing as pork, the end results here are pretty much the same. Ultimately, I got a really good result and it still took less time than traditional cooking methods. So it's no surprise that the presets didn't work for me on either of these machines. Both left the beans hard and undercooked. After adding an additional 30 minutes of cook time, I got a decent result. Between the two, I really appreciate the, the transparency that the Breville's interface gives us. On the Instant Pot, I can cook on high pressure or low pressure, that's it. But on the Breville, I can cook at a graduated scale of pressure from one to 12. It allows me to have more control over the most important variable in pressure cooking, pressure. So general takeaways for you as a consumer, you can make beans in this thing and you could do it in a shorter time than a traditional method, but you can't trust presets. They're a good starting point, but they're not one size fits all. Whether it's the Breville or the Instant Pot, that's up to you. One of the appliances multi-cookers claim they can replace are rice cookers. So let's make some rice. Ideally, what I'm looking for is a well-cooked rice. Not too wet, not too dry, just right. gotten used to that. It's the Instant Pot Jingle. If you can associate a sound with a brand, they've done a good job. So I'm adding two cups of rinsed rice and two cups of water. So I'm doing that ratio because that's what I read on the Instant Pot internet, and I wanna respect the Instant Pot internet. You don't need as much water when using your multi-cooker to make rice. Since evaporation and even boiling is limited, there's likely less water loss and more going into the rice grains. Okay, so I'm gonna be using the rice preset here. After you select the preset, hit the button again, and that will push you through either more or less cooking time. So in this case, I'm going to go normal with the Breville, selecting pressure cook and the rice option. So on the Instant Pot, the rice preset defaults to a low pressure setting, for 12 minutes on normal. And on the Breville, the preset defaults to 7.5 PSI. So that's right around the middle range for a total of five minutes. But knowing what we do about the Breville, it's probably going to spend some more time in the preheat mode while cooking's still happening. So we got about five minutes left on the Instant Pot and the Breville's still preheating and building up pressure. So while we're waiting, let's talk about the pressure release part of the pressure cooking. On the Instant Pot, there is a manual steam valve that needs to be rotated in order for venting to occur. It's a little tricky because hot steam is gonna be rushing out of the Instant Pot, and if you're not careful, you stand the risk of burning yourself. The switch is pretty short, less than an inch, so your finger is right in the action. The Breville, on the other hand, has a steam release button, so when you press that, it releases without having to put your hands anywhere near the valve. So the Instant Pot's done, we're gonna let this naturally release for about 10 minutes. The Breville's done with the pressure cooking phase of cooking, and now it's auto pulsing, which is part of the preset. Auto pulsing means that it's releasing steam kind of automatically at the end of the pressure cooking cycle. Both these presets, when they show you what they're going to do, they tell you a certain amount of time. But that time only is the pressure time. When you're pressure cooking, you have to consider not just the pressure cooking time, but the preheating time, the pressure buildup time, the pressure cooking time, and the steam release time. All that adds up. 
this rice is supposed to take 12 minutes in the case of the Instant Pot and five minutes in the case of the Breville, but in reality, they're probably both gonna take about 20 minutes, which is about the same amount of time that I could do this on a stove top. Okay, our rice is done. So on the Instant Pot, I'm going to vent whatever pressure is left inside until this little silver pin moves down. Okay. Okay, awesome. So I'm fluffing the rice, which is what I would normally do. All right, I'm gonna try the Instant Pot first. Mm, okay. Not bad. Okay, I'm gonna try the Breville. Hmm, close. I think the Breville's a little bit more cooked. The Breville's preset did a better job. With some adjustments on the Instant Pot, I could probably get a very similar result. Since I don't have much room to play as far as pressure goes, I would probably just add a little bit more time. Now that we've made some rice, eventually you're gonna have to clean these pots out. And this highlights one of the major differences between these two, material and build quality. The Breville uses a nonstick coating on their pot that does a really good job of making sure that this is easy to clean. The Instant Pot has a standard stainless steel container, which works well, but definitely is harder to clean and things like rice stick to it. So what did we learn from this test? Can a multi-cooker replace a rice cooker? The answer is probably yes, but you're not gonna save any time. And if anything, it's actually quicker to do this on your range top. Not to worry because our next test is going to be a little bit more exciting. We're gonna be testing whether or not these multi-cookers can cook at a low even temperature that's required for making cheesecakes. So in front of me, I have two spring form pans specifically designed to be used with the Instant Pot. Sold separately, of course. In the pans, I have a graham cracker base ready to go for my crust and I've prepared some cheesecake batter that I'll be pouring into the pans. I'm adding one cup of water and the trivet. After that, I'm adding my foil sling and easing in the pan with the cheesecake batter. And this will make getting it out much easier and safer. The recipe I'm using calls for 25 minutes of cooking at high pressure and then a 10 minute natural release. Going to pressure at high for 25 minutes. I really wish the Instant Pot had an enter button. It's kind of weird to wait for it to just turn on on its own. The Breville interface is mostly just single presses, but changing the steam release mode requires a long press. So that's a little bit inconsistent and people will miss that. All right, we are officially cheesecaking. So the Instant Pot has reached pressure and now we're counting down for 25 minutes. As per usual, the Breville is taking its sweet time, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna end up with similar results. Ideally, what we're looking for here is a cheesecake that's got a smooth, silky, delicate texture. The Instant Pot is done cooking the cheesecake and now it's keeping the food warm as the steam naturally releases. Apparently that's what the L000 means. We're now up to L001, which means it's counting up. After 10 minutes of natural release, I manually release the remaining pressure. Open this carefully as to try not to get water onto the cheesecake. Take this out using the foil sling. That's hot. All right, there we go. I dried up any condensation on top of the cheesecakes and put them both in the fridge so that they can rest for a few hours. Okay, it's been a few hours and we're back from the fridge. Time to release the cheesecakes. They look real good, they look like cheesecakes. The Instant Pot looks a bit nicer and it feels a bit nicer. It feels a little bit fluffier and creamier while the Breville felt a little dense. Let's see how they taste. I'm gonna try the Breville first. It's smooth, it has a really nice texture. It's a bit dense. Um, but there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually still good. I like it. Okay, let's try the Instant Pot. Just cutting through it, I can feel how much lighter the Instant Pot is. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely creamier. That's really good. That's delicious, and it has a smoother, creamier, lighter texture to it. So I would say that the Instant Pot actually has a slightly better result than, than the Breville. I'm not too surprised from the results since the Breville cooked the uh, the cheesecake for longer just based off of the process of preheating the 25 minutes of cooking and then the release it definitely was in there for at least five more minutes than um the instant pot cooked its cheesecake so i think the next time i would use a breville to make this cheesecake i'd probably just reduce the time by five minutes to see if i can get a result that's similar to the instant pot to me this is a success for both of these multi cookers it's not just a gimmick you could really make a cheesecake and it really isn't that hard if you want me to make you a cheesecake Leave a note in the comments. Next up, we're gonna make some steamed broccoli. So I've got some broccoli here in steam baskets and these actually come with the Breville. You can also easily find a basket that will fit in the Instant Pot. You'll just have to pay a little extra for it. So unlike rice and beans, we're not gonna be using the presets for this. Instead, it was recommended that I use the highest pressure setting for the lowest amount of time that I could do. I'm also gonna be using these trivets to hold the steam basket above the water. This guy came with the Instant Pot and this one came with the Breville. Let's get started. I'm adding the trivet into the pot adding one cup of water, and then the broccoli in a steam basket. For the Instant Pot, I'm using the high pressure setting at a time of zero minutes. 
For the Breville, I'm using the custom setting. I'm putting it to the highest pressure and the Breville only goes down to one minute. I don't wanna overcook, so I'm actually going to go ahead and steam release as soon as the timer starts. Ideally, what I'm looking for here in steamed broccoli is something that's cooked, but not mushy. From everything else that we've done, I'm assuming this should take about eight minutes or so. It's broccoli time. They both look pretty good. The Breville one, the coloration is a little bit off, like it potentially might be overcooked, but we'll see. Hmm, okay. It's edible, but for my taste, it's it's a bit too tender. The Breville is, and, and this makes sense, the Breville cooked for longer, it's more mushy, definitely overcooked. So on the Instant Pot, if I interrupted the pressure buildup to reduce the overall cooking time, I think I would have gotten a firmer result that I would have enjoyed better. On the Breville, there is a steam option I could have used, and maybe that's the way to go for broccoli. If you wanna make some baby food or a cream of broccoli soup, then this could work as a product. While doing these tests as an engineer, there are a few things I couldn't help but notice. Build quality. Both of these pressure cookers are fundamentally built well. That's because they have to hold the amount of pressure that they do. With that said, the Breville uses higher quality finished materials. And Breville as a brand is known for this. Well, it's clear that there's a lot more stainless steel showing and the transitions between the steel and the plastic are seamless and well done. I really like the Breville's metal handles. They're more ergonomic and they also have a plastic insert that keeps your hands away from the hot pot. And this is a small thing, but when you look at their condensation collectors, you can see that Breville's is just a higher quality build with thicker plastic material. The Instant Pot is just a little cheaper feeling. This definitely looks like something in engineer design, while this looks like something in industrial designer would design. And another thing to note is Breville's power cord. This is a pretty standard design for Breville, but it makes it just easier to pull out and makes it easy to use. All these little things add up. I can tell that more care and thought and consideration went into the design of the Breville. And that comes with a price tag. Cleanability. All multi-cookers that I've seen and worked with include a groove that collects water that drips from the lid. This is around the edge of the housing. Unfortunately, this is a place where a lot of liquid, food, and crumbs can build up. And because it's so narrow, it's really hard to clean because the Instant Pot's lid can be fully removed, it's a little bit easier to get access to that area. Accessories. So for the cheesecake, we use the Instant Pot branded spring form pan. I'd expect them to have considered that design and come up with an easy way for me to remove it from the pot that it's supposed to go in. The Breville comes with a steam basket as well as a trivet, while the Instant Pot only comes with a trivet. Having to use a foil sling was not an ideal situation. I kind of still feel a little pain in my hand from the steam burn, but that sounds to me like a design opportunity for both either Instant Pot or Breville. Whatever multi-cooker you end up buying is probably gonna get the job done. As a consumer, you can believe the hype. These are tools that have a wide capability. Most of the differences have to do with the user interaction. As a design engineer, I definitely appreciate these considerations and would probably go ahead and pay for something like the Breville. That said, I might wait until it goes on sale. <laughs>